Thanks for the introductions, Brian. Um, and Marta, thanks for joining us. Uh, I appreciate you uh, taking time out to talk to us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And uh, Brian already did a generous introduction, so I, I don't think I need to explain any more about what you do or who you are at this point. Um, but maybe what you could do is start us off by uh, talking a little bit about Filecoin Foundation and, and what you're trying to do with Filecoin and what challenges it's intended to solve. Sure, absolutely. Well, in short, uh, we're working to preserve humanity's most important information. Uh, and I think the best way to think about Filecoin and the problems that we're trying to solve is really to uh, think a little bit about today's internet and uh, its vulnerabilities. So just as one uh, perfectly timed example, on Tuesday, there were dozens of websites around the world that uh, went offline for an hour because of an internal glitch at a major cloud service provider. So you had the UK government's main public service portal down. You had CNN down, the New York Times down. Um, and this is just the latest example of how the internet's centralized model creates these single points of failure. Um, and that's really concerning when you think about the fact that file storage right now is, is basically mon a monopoly. So much of today's internet relies on, on just a few players to store and serve billions of websites and, and applications. Um, and so, so, so backing up a little further, on today's internet, if I go to a web page, that's information that's being retrieved from a particular server somewhere in the world, maybe really far away from me. And I'm, I'm looking for that particular web page in a particular place, and I'm hoping that it's still in that place. So it's sort of like, imagine you just read a really good book and you recommend it to your friend, but instead of telling them the name of the book, you say where it is. So you say, well, it's at the New York Public Library and it's the third shelf from the left and it's five books over. And, and that's basically how today's internet works. So in order to go get that book, you have to fly to New York and you have to go to the public library and you have to find the place on the shelf where that book is supposed to be. But maybe it's not there. Maybe someone moved it or tore out pages, right? Or maybe you'll get there and you'll realize you actually had the book in your backpack the whole time. And again, that's today's internet. And so it really just makes a lot more sense to tell your friend the name of the book that you just read and let your friend find that book by its name rather than its location. And so that's what IPFS, the interplanetary file system does. So instead of retrieving content by where it is, it retrieves the content by what it is using something called content addressing. So content is addressed using cryptographic hashes um, instead of by reference to a particular location on a particular server, which means that you don't need a web address to find your file. You just need to know its content address. And if you have it or someone near you has it, you can retrieve it from there. So that's IPFS and Filecoin builds on top of that. It adds an incentive layer, um, incentive mechanisms, which I think are um, a foundational technology for the decentralized web. Um, so some people think of Filecoin like Airbnb for file storage. So miners can rent out their storage space and then earn Filecoin for doing that. And users can spend Filecoin uh, to store files. So really intended to be an incentive layer for the decentralized web. Um, and at the Filecoin Foundation, um, we're here to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information um, using the Filecoin network. Uh, so that's what we're doing at the foundation. So storing, uh, you know, humanity's content in terms of, you know, some of our most important things, um, you know, that sounds like th there's a, a lot of challenges there. I mean, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons for doing this, I assume, and there's probably some risks of bu building on or using a decentralized web infrastructure. Can you maybe explain to me sort of the pros and cons in terms of why someone would do this or maybe some of the potential risks that might come up? Yeah, absolutely. So with IPFS, anyone can store information, but if someone's serving the only copy of a file and they close their computer and go offline for a few days, that file isn't available anymore. Um, so, it, you know, in until they reopen their computer, that file is offline. Um, and so that's, that's, an, that, that's definitely an issue with the decentralized web, right? You're not paying some centralized person to uh to store that file and so you need a way to make sure that that data persists and so that is the problem that filecoin is solving you you um you actually basically 
are able to pay people to make sure that there are multiple copies and to make sure that someone is always incentivized to make that data available. Um, you know, and, and, and it really solves the issue of if there's no central corporation for you to pay to host your website or your data, you know, who, who is going to host it? Who's really going to take on the infrastructure cost that it takes uh, to, to basically recreate, reconstitute uh, the web. Um, and so, so, so for us, Filecoin is really addressing one of the major problems of the decentralized web. Okay. So, I mean, it makes me think back though, you know, when, you know, we've been talking about IPFS you know, for a number of years now at this point, um, you know, it sounds like there's an evolution in terms of, you know, a, a layer above IPFS now uh, with Filecoin where you can uh, extract more value out of the system by, you know, providing some incentives and reward models. Um, I think back to, you know, open source when things really took off in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, there tend to be these economic and competitive drivers. No one hire, no one company could like hire all the talented kernel developers in the world. And so the Linux kernel community became this place where a lot of that type of innovation started, in, in my opinion, you know, there's other open source projects out there, maybe some driven by companies, but to have a true sort of community model um, led to this faster time to market, faster integration with and users getting involved. Um, but, you know, we've been on this as the Linux Foundation, we've observed this sort of like multi-decade shift towards end user driven innovation and the ability of open source as a forum or a place for end users to collaborate with companies, vendors, others around the world who have the same types of problems. Um, you know, as you look at IPFS, you look at what you're doing with Filecoin, it looks like you're kind of an evolution of, um, you know, something similar to what we saw in, in the early days of open source. It, it, is that your feeling? Like, where do you think you're at in sort of that arc or trajectory around um, storing content? Yeah, I think that is a perfect, I think that is a perfect parallel. I think that's exactly right. And that's exactly, we are finding ourselves in that moment. So we launched the Filecoin network um, back in, in mid-October of, of this past year. Um, and it has scaled uh, so incredibly quickly. We're now over six exabytes of storage capacity on the network, which um, is frankly staggering and not, not uh, beyond what I think we, we could have expected. Um, and I think it's in part driven by the fact that well, well, several things. I mean, one thing I should say is Filecoin is, of course, completely open source. And so um, it's really important to us that we have literally um, thousands of people in the world participating um, and, and making this into a worldwide decentralized storage network. Um, and, and then I think there are some other things at, at play as well. So one of the things that that happens with Filecoin is you create this um, this uh, data storage marketplace, this really dynamic marketplace where you're doing um, storage deals. And I think um, I think just from an economic perspective, it turns out that that pencils out uh, pretty well. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of applications being built um, on top of Filecoin. And we have a, a really impressive and, and very fast growing ecosystem of literally hundreds of organizations that are collaborating uh, on the Filecoin network and, and building applications and developer tooling and infrastructure and more. And that certainly would not be the case in my view if we were not fully open source and, and really committed to um, the open source community. And, and of course, just as one example, um, we just heard from Jonathan Doughton um, and you know, Jonathan's uh, Starling project has been uh, building on top of, of IPFS and, and Filecoin. And um, really, I mean, he, as, as, you, as you heard, he's, he's creating, um, he's creating the ability to authenticate and store some of humanity's most sensitive and important digital records. So, you know, genocide testimony and, and documentation about human rights violations. Um, and, and he's really using the Filecoin network to store humanity's most important information, which is really aligned with our mission. And he's just one of many, many people who is building on top of the Filecoin network. Yeah, it's pretty interesting when you think about it, you know, in terms of, you know, genocide data, you know, some of these important sensitive documents, but, you know, even, you know, it layers lower in terms of critical importance to the history of the world or humanity, we have practical things, you know, I, I think of, 
you know, back, I think it was in 2013, Jonathan Zittrain and Kendra Albert from uh, Harvard, they were making headlines, you know, pointing out that roughly half of the URLs cited in US Supreme Court decisions linked to nowhere on the internet because the URLs had changed or the content had been moved. Um, you know, so I was, I, it sounds like Filecoin could potentially help with these types of problems. Is, is that an appropriate way to frame it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that link rot is a really serious threat to, to data on the web. And, um, you know, they've just updated that, uh, that research and, and looked at, uh, looked at links in the New York Times articles and, and found that uh, more than a quarter of the deep links are, are actually uh, now no longer working. Um, and so you have completely inaccessible pages um, when you have links in, in, in the New York Times. Um, and so if you look at how Filecoin could play a role in that, um, the, the, the issue here is you have these particular URLs pointing to a particular server somewhere in the world. And if instead of doing that, you're pointing to uh, a particular content ID, you can retrieve that as long as there are still copies anywhere. Um, as long as someone somewhere is storing it, um, IPFS solves that problem. And then if you really wanna make sure that data persists, you can pay using Filecoin to make sure that it does persist and to make sure that that data is continuing um, to, to exist on the network. Um, and, and if you have things like Supreme Court decisions or New York Times, uh, New York Times articles. I mean, anyone can pay to, to to store to make sure that those things are stored in perpetuity and to to make sure that that data is persisting. Um, and and so one example of uh, another organization that's working really hard on that is uh, uh, the Internet Archive, uh, which is of course preserving the web and uh, trying to foster the web's future by by making sure that it's preserved. And uh, uh, one of the things they're doing is is storing some of their data on the Filecoin network uh, in the Filecoin archives project. Um, so similarly, taking taking the taking the web and and putting it onto, uh, making sure that it'll persist by by putting it onto the uh, the Filecoin network. Yeah. It also makes me think like, you know, in the early days of open source adoption, we had sort of this movement around open source. There was kind of this like moral underpinning in terms of, you know, opening up the code that we were all dependent upon and using and being able to make it accessible to anybody. Um, and then there was sort of this practical debate that happened, you know, after enterprises and large companies and vendors started leeching onto this and saying, hey, you know, we could actually work in this community too and we could build a product or solution around it. And, and sort of, you know, open source grew up in some ways and there was this sort of professionalization around it. And I, I'm wondering, you know, are you seeing, you know, similar types of tensions because, you know, at that time it was, there was some tension, you know, as some people who had started off some of these projects or gotten involved for certain reasons, you know, now you have all these companies potentially involved who are interested in, you know, maybe making use of this for real practical applications where they can do content storage in a decentralized model. Are you seeing any sort of this, you know, innovators dilemma where you started off with one group and now, you know, you're shifting in terms of, you know, making this available as a, as part of a solution or something in an enterprise context? Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's, I think we're definitely building on the shoulders of giants here um, in terms of, um, you know, the, the ability for, for open source code to be, to be used at, uh, in enterprise and, and we, um, we are fully open source and Filecoin has been great for enterprise. Um, I think it's because it's a really compelling alternative to these traditional centralized um, storage intermediaries, um, and and not only it, not only do you have the the sort of story around the decentralized web and the narrative and the the uh, the way that it addresses the the issues with the centralized web. Um, but it's also, I think, very compelling economically. Um, you know, because we have these dynamic markets, um, the Filecoin marketplace is a very dynamic market for uh, data storage. And so I think enterprises are really, uh, really picking up on that. And so, you know, that includes um, obviously file storage, securing large data sets, and also verifying data, which is a, a whole, as, as we heard from Jonathan Doten earlier, which is a whole new, um, really important area. Um, and it, it really allows people to uh, develop 
self-publishing alternatives, for example. Um, just to give you a few examples, um, we have uh, we have something called Slate that is building on top of Filecoin. It's basically like Dropbox for Filecoin. Uh, makes it really easy to to store your files as an individual user built on top of Filecoin. Uh, we have uh, a, we have something called Fleek building on top of us, which lets you build websites and apps which are stored on the Filecoin network and um, built in a way that's permissionless and trustless and free of centralized gatekeepers. Um, so I, I would say I think there's there's a lot of enterprise adoption and I think there's a lot more in the foreseeable future. Um, it's really we're really starting to see the uh, we're really starting to see things tip in that regard. And I think we only have a few minutes remaining here, so uh, I'll maybe uh, uh, leave on a question of how does somebody get started with Filecoin? How do, how do you start, you know, using it or uh, participating? Or if you're a company, how do you, you know, start engaging as as someone who's building a solution on it? Well, one of the things that's so great is that we uh, we are fully open source, so it's it's actually very easy to engage with with us and our code, um, and you don't even have to interact with humans if you don't want to. Um, but if you if you don't mind interacting with humans, one of the things that the foundation is doing is really trying to build our ecosystem um, and make sure that we're we're spurring growth in the in the Filecoin ecosystem. So we have all sorts of developer grants um, and and other uh, grants that are available. Uh, we have uh, lots of events and hackathons, uh, and and we're really trying to invest in the ecosystem and make sure that uh, that it it takes off in, in the way that it can. Uh, so lots of opportunities uh, when, if you're building on top of Filecoin or interested in building on top of Filecoin uh, to work with the Filecoin Foundation to do that. Sounds good. Well, Marta, I appreciate you joining us today. And uh, thank you and uh, all of the developers and those involved in Filecoin and IPFS for enabling an infrastructure that I think could potentially help solve challenges around preserving some of the most important content that we have, whether it be you know, genocidal records or even Supreme Court case links, which I know many attorneys in our ecosystem would, would like to have uh, more readily available. So thank you very much for your help. And uh, Brian, I'll pass it back to you. Thank Great. you.